Today I'm going to be making for you a butternut squash risotto. It's not too difficult to make, so don't worry. It should take about 40 to 45 minutes and feeds about two to four people. All the ingredients are listed all below, so let's get to it. Hi everyone and welcome to my prep area. I have all my ingredients in front of me for this wonderful risotto. I have my rice, my garlic, my shallots, my thyme, and my butter. I have a lemon here for garnish, some chives cut up here for a garnish, my butternut squash. Now this is a wonderful, wonderful ingredient. It's gonna add so much flavor, a slight sweetness to this dish, and it's gonna be so good. But especially right here, I have my cheese, my Parmesan Reggiano, and it's delicious. <laughs> We're gonna cut each end off. We go one side, and the other side, and then right down the center widthwise. There we go. Just so you have a flat surface to be able to cut off the skin. So once you start peeling it, you will go right against the skin, and you will go all the way down to the bottom, and then you will have this little guy here. Continue doing that all the way around. After you've taken all the skin off, all this wonderful orange is exposed and it smells delicious. So all you're gonna do is cut it right down the center horizontally. And what's that? It's like pumpkin, it's crazy. You're just gonna grab your spoon and literally just go against the walls of the inside of the pit. And you know what's great after is that you can take these seeds, rinse them off, dry them off and roast them and put whatever flavor you want in it. Yeah, super clean. So we have these wonderful halves. We're gonna set those aside. We're gonna do the same thing with this guy. We're just gonna slide it right down the center. Creates wonderful halves. We wanna cut these into about half inch cubes so they cook evenly. All right, it's shallot time. So I have a little shallot here. They're not big. They're a little bit purpley in color, so they're a little bit sweeter and a lot more mild than like your regular larger onion. I've peeled this one already. Just like the squash, you want to cut through the center first, so then you have a flat surface to cut on. You want to put it right down on this flat. I only cut one end off, not the other end. This end will hold it together. You want to cut as close as you possibly can to that end. It's going to make it so much easier to dice. Watch this. Boom. Now, the recipe that I had from before says one clove of garlic, but I'm not silly. I put four. So if you want to chop garlic really, really easily, put, place your knife right over top, squish it down. It's already smashed, and then just slice. Throw it one more time, then done. All right, now we're in the kitchen. I have my pan warming up on medium to high heat. You want to use a pan that has high sides because we're going to add everything in here. It's pretty much a one pan meal, which is awesome. Um, so I have my olive oil right here, extra virgin olive oil I love to use. I have my chicken stock warming up. It's just on a low heat. You wanna know if your pan is a little hot enough? Just stick a spoon into some liquid and just, if it starts beating, it's hot. So we'll put this in here, about two to three tablespoons of olive oil. We're gonna take our shallots, we're gonna throw those in there. Ooh, we hear that sizzle, that's so nice. Cook these for about a minute before you put the garlic in. Garlic is a little bit thinner and a little bit easier to cook, so you wanna get these to a kind of a translucent kind of color. All right, the shallots are perfectly translucent. They're crisping up a little bit. Now time to quickly throw in your garlic. And now we're just gonna start stirring it around nice and quick, get the garlic in there. Butter time, it's two tablespoons of butter. Have that melt a little bit. And I have my squash here, it's all cut into half inch cubes-ish, uh, but it'll all be uniform and it'll all cook wonderfully together. All right, after your butternut squash is in, take your time, it's three sprigs of thyme. You wanna put that in there, mix it around a little bit. This is gonna cook for about five to 10 minutes until the squash is tender. Now you wanna make sure that you salt and pepper each and every single layer that you put in here. So just grab a little pinch of salt, a little pinch of pepper, throw it in there. It needs to flavor each and every single layer. I add the onions, the garlic, the thyme, and the butternut squash. Put some salt and pepper in there. Let it simmer, let it cook, let it collect all those flavors. So while the squash is in here, you wanna stir it as often as you possibly can so it does not stick to the bottom. You wanna stir it for about five to 10 minutes just so it's nice and soft and tender uh, on the inside. You can always try it, always try your food. Each piece is getting a bit softer. 
So it's about time to add our rice. Now make sure you get arboreal rice. I don't know how to pronounce this rice. Arboreal, arboreal rice. Our squash is now nice and tender. It's splitting a little bit from itself, but not too much. You don't want it mushy. So now you have your arboreal rice. You just need a cup and a half in this recipe. It's going to give you a lot. So now just add that in there, spread it all around, and you want to start mixing as soon as possible. Now what this is going to do is that it's actually going to help toast the rice. I mean, it is just rice and butter, but I mean, the flavors are there. It's kind of cool. All right, so you've now kind of stirred the rice around for a good like two to three minutes. The oil is kind of getting absorbed by the rice already, so you want to start labeling in your chicken stock. So here's our warmed chicken stock. Again, make sure it's not cold or else it's gonna change the temperature. Mm. Wanna add one to two full ladles into here. Let this absorb. Once it's absorbed about 90 to 95%, that's when you can start ladling some more chicken stock in, one at a time. Let it absorb and repeat. Let it absorb and repeat until the rice is nice and tender. Let this all absorb. Make sure you stir it once in a while. How old were you when you found out that this little hole is actually meant for your spoon? So the liquid is almost absorbed. As soon as I move it to the side, you can see that there's no other liquid underneath. Grab another ladle, put that in there. Quickly salt and pepper, every layer. Just because I like to drink. I have some wine here. It's about half a cup to three quarters of a cup of wine. And you just put that right in there. Make sure you boil out the alcohol. You don't want it tasting like wine, you want to taste the essence of wine in there. Some people use a Chardonnay because it's buttery. I like Sauvignon Blanc. It has more of like an apple flavor. It kind of feels like fall. So it seems like the rice is almost cooked. You see how the sides kind of doubled. The liquid almost evaporated and absorbed by the rice. Grab yourself a little spoon. See if it's nice and tender. This color is gorgeous, it smells amazing. Mm. It's perfect. It literally needs like another 30 seconds. So right now, we'll just shut the heat off because the residual heat inside the pan will continue cooking it. And it's cheese time. I mean, if you want to do a cup and a half, it's totally fine. It's up to you. But a cup should be perfect. You just grab it and just start sprinkling it over top. Grab your spoon, mix in that little bit. Grab another handful. Sprinkle it right over top. It's gonna add that little bit of salt, that little bit of sharpness to it too. The butternut squash is a bit sweeter. The thyme gives it that earthy taste. That wine gives it that earthy taste as well. A little bit of acid in here, but the Parmesan will kind of mellow all that out, make it nice and creamy. And once all the cheese is mixed in, you want it to be this wonderful consistency. The rice will continue cooking and it'll be ready to plate in just one minute. I have my bowl here, my thyme is ready. I chopped up some chives just for fun, and now I'm just gonna plate it. All right, so now that it's in our bowl, just grab your little sprig of thyme, grab those leaves right on top, and here it is, your butternut squash risotto. You can tell the yellow hue, the beautiful, thick, cut butternut squash pieces in there, the thyme on top, the chives just to garnish it. It smells so wonderful, it'll impress anybody you make this for. Thank you so much again for joining me on this episode of Cooking with Chin Fall Edition. Again, I'm Nick Chin, and I really hope that your butternut squash risotto turns out as amazing and as delicious as this one. If you have any comments about the video and about the recipe, please comment below. I'll have what I'm having. See you soon. <laughs>